Wait a minute. Mark, what's that? That's Spider Man. Sure, look like him. Spider Man. Whoa. How's it going? How's Jeez. it going? Dude, Spider Man. Hey, thanks for dropping in, buddy. Incredible. Today, our Spidey senses are tingling as we take a look at the amazing adventures of Spider-Man at Universal's Islands of Adventure, an attraction that revolutionized the theme park industry and brought the Marvel character to life. We will also be taking a look at Spider-Man and Marvel's importance in pop culture and how that connects to his theme park presence. In August of 1962, the world would be introduced to the wall crawler himself, Spider-Man, in Amazing Fantasy 15. Created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, Peter Parker would go on to become one of the most recognizable superheroes all around the world, only second to Batman. Since his creation, Spider-Man has been featured in many forms of media, from animated TV shows, skits on the electric company back in the 1970s, and a series of films starting with the Sam Raimi Spider-Man in 2002. By the time we get to the 1990s, Marvel Entertainment was not in the place it is today with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. By 1996, Marvel stock had gone from $35 all the way down to only $2. The comic industry was about to have a bubble burst. A bubble created by the large printing of collector edition versions of many different comic titles. This created a large inventory that would eventually diminish the value of these books over time. By 1998, the toy company Toy Biz would merge with Marvel to bring them out of bankruptcy, now becoming Marvel Enterprises. This led to many of the characters' rights being sold off to different film studios such as Sony, 20th Century Fox, and Universal. However, they were still looking for other ways to license out their characters for other uses. Meanwhile, Universal Creative was working on the second park for their Orlando resort. The original idea was for the cartoon world. Universal was looking to partner with Warner Brothers to bring their properties, especially the Looney Tunes, to directly compete with Disney's characters presented at the Magic Kingdom. To represent comic book characters, they looked to use the characters from DC Comics due to the popularity of the Tim Burton Batman films. Universal pitched the idea to Warner Brothers for possible rides, shows, and more using the DC characters. The proposed superhero land would be split into two sections. One would be themed as Gotham City with Batman-themed attractions. The other would be themed as Metropolis that included attractions based around Superman. Gotham would include a Batman stunt show called the Batman and Robin Action Adventure Spectacular. Some other attraction ideas include the Joker's Madhouse and a dueling coaster called Batman vs. the Penguin. Warner Brothers would eventually pass on the deal after negotiations about royalties would not come to an agreement. The second park would need to be restructured away from the cartoon world and more focused on individual sections based on other properties such as Jurassic Park and Dr. Seuss. In 1994, Universal would approach Marvel to bring their properties to the new park instead. Universal had already purchased the rights to the Hulk and Namor the Submariner previously for their film division. The new deal would give Universal Studios exclusive rights east of the Mississippi to all Marvel characters as long as the theme parks remained open. This would come into play once again years later when Disney would purchase Marvel in 2009 for $4 billion. Marvel's Superhero Island would become one of the sections of the new park that was now called Islands of Adventure. This section of the park is still one of the most unique sections of anything park and a time capsule to the 90s era of Marvel Comics. One of the new attractions part of this deal was the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. Work on the ride began in 1996. Landmark Entertainment Group, headed by Gary Goddard, would develop the concept and ride design. Goddard had previously worked with Universal on Terminator 2 3D and Jurassic Park The Ride. The original ride system was designed to be the Omnimover system, similar to the Haunted Mansion or Spaceship Earth over at Disney. The original version of the ride would have included villains such as the Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, and the Lizard. The ride system would later be replaced with the Enhanced Motor Vehicle, or EMV, similar to the one just recently used at the Indiana Jones Adventure in Disneyland. 
the thought was to combine the 3D effects of Terminator 2 3D and the motion simulator of Back to the Future The Ride. Universal Creative had to find a way to create a convincing stereoscopic 3D effect while having a vehicle moving throughout the space. At this point, this type of effect had never been done within the theme park industry. The 12-person vehicle, called the Scoop, would be developed by Oceaneering International. The vehicles are mounted on a track that moves throughout the attraction and is capable of 6 degrees of freedom with 360 degrees of rotation. There are 13 30-foot tall screens throughout the ride, with 12 of them showing a 3D video. Many of the screens are rear projected, which was a first for 3D films. In order to make the 3D video more immersive, a a process called squinching was invented. This process intentionally distorts the 3D image as the ride vehicle passes the screen, in order to give the correct dimensions. Phil Hedema, president and creative director of Hedema Group, said that each scene is designed so that we are carefully controlling what you can see. Other than the projected screens, live effects such as fog, water, wind, fire, heat, and strobe lights are experienced throughout the ride. All of the show scenes and effects are controlled by a computer system designed by iTech Entertainment. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man would soft open on May 27, 1999. The next day, May 28, the ride would officially open along with Islands of Adventure. While we don't have the true numbers, it is estimated the ride cost between $100 to $120 million to develop. Upon opening, the attraction was met with immediate praise for the ride experience and technological achievements. The ride would receive many industry awards, including the Golden Ticket Award 12 years in a row for Best Dark Ride from 1999 till 2010. On January 23rd, 2004, the attraction would open at Universal Studios Japan. It would lead to an uptick of attendance at that park. The ride would eventually be removed 20 years later in January of 2024. Guests enter the Daily Bugle to join as cub reporters and jump into a new high-tech news vehicle called the Scoop. While walking through the queue, we see news stories on the theft of the Statue of Liberty and Dr. Octopus threatening to destroy it. After his passing in 2018, a tribute to Stan Lee was added into the queue. Due to a lack of reporters, J. Jonah Jameson sends the guests to get the scoop on the story. 3D glasses, described as night vision goggles, are handed to guests as they prepare to jump onto the vehicle. As they leave and make their way to the New York City docks, the guests encounter Spider-Man. The scoop vehicle moves in synchronicity to the movements of Spider-Man on the screen. Moving on, the guests encounter the Sinister Syndicate in a warehouse, which starts our journey through the other scenes, including Electro, Scream, Hydro-Man, and the Hobgoblin. In the ride's climax, Dr. Octopus lifts the scoop up 400 feet with an anti-gravity cannon. Through a number of synchronized effects, the sensation of rising up is achieved without the vehicle ever leaving the ground. Spider-Man saves the guests right before they hit the ground. As the guests head back to the Daily Bugle, we see Jameson floating in the air being shot by the anti-gravity cannon. On March 8, 2012, an updated version of the attraction would open with remastered video, updated mechanics, and brand new digital projectors. Stan Lee was also added as the ride narrator and also contains a few cameos throughout the attraction. On December 31st, 2009, the acquisition of Marvel by the Walt Disney Company would be finalized. A lot of questions were brought up on what the future of Marvel at Universal Studios would be. Rick Fogelstar has written extensively about the Disney Empire. If Disney's taking them away, in effect, from Universal, wow, what a shrewd move on their part. Based on the original deal, Universal would keep the theme park rights in Florida and Japan. They would also get the exclusive rights to use the Marvel name within a theme park setting. The first Disney attraction based on a Marvel property would be Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, which opened in 2017. Since the Guardians of the Galaxy have no direct relation to the characters used in the Universal parks, Disney was able to create Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot. Cosmic Rewind opened on May 27, 2022. Over at Disney California Adventure in Anaheim, they would open Avengers Campus on June 4th, 2021. Along with this new land, Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure, would open. Along with its counterpart at Walt Disney Studios in France, these are the only Disney-specific Spider-Man attractions in the parks. 
The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man would go on to be a revolutionary attraction for the entire theme park industry, inspiring other attractions such as Transformers the Ride and Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. The attraction continues to be one of the most exciting and immersive experiences at any theme park. With his appearance and importance within the MCU, Spider-Man's popularity has only continued to grow in the recent years. No matter who your favorite Spider-Man may be, we can all agree that with great power comes great responsibility. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into the amazing adventures of Spider-Man. Please leave a like, subscribe to our channel, and let us know in the comments below what other topics you would like us to discuss. And as always, keep on collecting!